Join costs. Topic three, time for some examples. In just a moment, I am going to pull up my Excel spreadsheet where I have copy and pasted the activities, these examples into the Excel spreadsheet. And then I'm gonna walk through what's on your slides posted to Brightspace, uh, the walkthrough of the costs and the allocation in Excel, which I've also linked in Brightspace. Uh, so you're welcome to do either follow along uh, with me and attempt it in Excel or follow along via the slides. At the end, there's gonna be an MCQ question, which I would of course encourage you to try on your own in Excel or using a piece of paper with perhaps a calculator. All right, let's get at this. Okay, so for the first one, we are going to extend the example that we used in topic video two, uh, so the video just previous to this, where we talked about milk. Uh, and we have milk and cheese and we have where when the cheese curds are separated uh, from the liquid whey, uh, the cheese curds go on to make cheese and liquid whey goes on to be produced into some protein powders. And this all comes from a joint product, uh, pardon me, a joint um, process of milk. So it goes from milk and then it splits off to cheese curds and whey. Okay, so using the physical measures method, let us allocate how much joint costs to allocate to each of the liters uh, for cheese and to the whey. So let's use the total, so go cheese, and then we have whey. I'm trying so hard to make a no way joke, but you know, you know it's coming. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, <laughs> total cheese 10,000 liters uh, many of you had said that uh, just reading the question a little bit more slowly often helps you avoid uh, mistakes on exams so I would say that is really good advice and something that I will attempt to do when walking through this with you as well okay so liters and then we have total costs and we are told here the total joint costs are $10,000. And now we have to use the liters in the proportion of each to allocate this $10,000. And sure, you can look and say, oh, that's 25%, that's 75%, but let's actually go through it. So 10,000 liters of the total 40,000 liters that has been produced times by your fair share of the joint costs. So cheese we get 2,500 and whey, you can either say gets the rest because there's only two joint products here or you can go through and say you get 30,000 out of the total 40,000 uh, times by the 10,000 costs. Do a sober second check to make sure um, using your cell that this plus this equals this and you are good to go. All right, so under the physical measure method, we would be allocating $2,500 of joint costs to cheese and $7,500 to whey. Seems fair, I guess, um, but we'll start looking at whether or not this is actually uh, distorted later on. So let us just highlight this and see what we do in future. All right, so now we're looking at the sales value at split off, and we are still looking at cheese, and we are still looking at whey uh, and the total, but here we are looking at total sales value. Okay, so cheese. Oh, from 40 liters of milk, we can get 10,000 liters of cheese curd. Okay, 10,000. And what's this gonna sell for? Cheese curd sells for $42 per liter. Cool. And whey, how much are you gonna sell? Just whey at your split off point, you can sell for $14 per liter, but how much have you, oh, 30,000. Okay, something to keep in mind here is that we may have different amounts. Um, so this 40,000 liters of milk at the split off gives us uh, 10,000 liters of cheese curds, but 30,000 liters of whey uh, liquid. So something to keep in mind that they are, um, they could produce different amounts here. Okay, so we times it by the amount that each liter could sell for at the split off point, and we now get 
just by, you know, function here. Uh, 10,000 times 42 for cheese and 14 times 30,000 for whey gives us a total of 840. And our joint costs to allocate are still the 10,000 because it doesn't, like the joint costs don't go away. They are what they are what they are. So the input costs of the joint costs up till split off were 10,000. And now we get to see who gets how much. Well, you can physically look at this and say, 420 plus 420, that's the exact same. Um, so each one of these are gonna get 50%, or we can just prove it out and do it again here. You get 420 out of the total 840, uh, and you get your fair share and you get your fair share. Give this some decimals, a little bit of around here, and we're gonna highlight this to see that under the sales value at split off, you each get 5,000. Now, is this more fair than the physical method of 2,500 and 7,500? I don't know. I mean, something that feels very fair about just saying 50-50. But physical, I mean, you should get more if you produce more, right? I don't know. Because can you really do a lot? Are you really gonna sell this at the split off for $42 per liter and $14 per liter, or are you gonna do more with it? You know, is the whey in liquid whey form really something that you're planning on selling? Maybe, maybe not. So if it's not what you're planning on selling, perhaps we need to look at the net realizable value method. The final cheese product blocks made from curd sells for $78 per liter with no loss in weight during production. The additional processing costs $8 per liter to make the cheese, and the whey requires packaging and will sell in bulk for $18 per liter. But that costs us an extra dollar per liter to do so. So from, from the 40 liters of milk after additional processing after split off, 10,000 liters of cheese block and 30,000 liters of packaged whey liquid are produced at an input cost a time of split off of 10,000. So let's take a look at how we are gonna cost this. So we still have our cheese and we have our whey and we have our total. Here we're gonna have a total sales value for cheese and then we're gonna have separable costs and it's gonna be our net realizable value. So we'll wanna do this for each here. And then noting that our total goal of all of this is to get those joint costs. And those joint costs, so don't forget, that's our $10,000 that we're looking at. Okay, let me put a little line up here. All right, cheese. Cheese curds, uh, these are going to end up selling as cheese blocks, and that's gonna be 10,000, what are they? 10,000 um, at our $78 times by 78. And our way are going to sell for, maybe we just keep going with this. Yeah, let's just keep going. Okay, I like to follow the fact pattern. So meaning, <laughs> uh, meaning if we are going down um, here, we just kind of keep going within uh, the text of the paragraph versus bouncing around. Okay, so the additional processing cost $8 per liter. So this is going to be a cost. So I'm gonna go equals negative eight times 10,000 liters. And yes, I will accept that. Okay, perfect. And so my net realizable value will be my sales value less my separable costs. So uh, seven, seven, two. Ah, little extra zero there. Why not? So my net realizable value is seven hundred and eighty dollars for my cheese blocks. Okay. So now we have the way packaging will sell in bulk for $18 per liter. Now I am going to scroll down, so that's 30,000 liters of whey will be packed. So 30,000 times by my 
$5 per liter gets me my 540. And then there's separable costs. Again, they're costs, so I'm gonna make them negative. And that is going to be um, packaging for $18 per liter at my 30,000 liters. Oops, um, let's see. Sorry, not selling. It will sell for separable costs of $1 which gets me my 30,000 in costs. And so my net realizable value for my way is 510,000. I'm gonna add both of these up so that my total net realizable value for both my cheese and my way from that original production that had $10,000 in joint costs is gonna be $1.21 million. So then I give the proportional fair share uh, NRV to oops, of the 10,000 to cheese and I am going to do the same thing for way. Okay. Way. So here I just want to kind of show you one thing. And I'm just going to title this NRV. And I'm going to scroll it a little bit. And we're going to take our sales value. I'm going to copy paste this into here. And I'm going to say, oops. This was our sales value. And then our physical method, if you go back and look here. So here are all these methods. We were allocating $10,000 of costs through each and just wanted to kind of show you um, the difference. So I don't know guys, what do you think? If you are dealing with something that ends up selling $1.21 million, is this, you know, whether or not you are allocating the 10,000, is that really 10,000, what is that? Like not even 1%. How much of your time do you really, really, really want to spend thinking about or really performing these calculations. So you kind of see that the net realizable value gets you 5.8K versus 4.2K. Really the difference between each of them is gonna be even less than that 1% because that 1% represented the $10,000. So does it really matter? Remember the physical method method is or just the physical method, <laughs> is the amount that just looks at the straight up leaders. That's something that you would have in your system because you need to count how much is flowing through your inventory system as it is. So you'd have this readily available. The sales value, you have to go to the market and actually figure out, hey, how much are my cheese curds worth? How much are my liquid whey unpackaging worth? And then, uh, as you saw with our last example, it took the longest because we had to go out and figure out, hey, what's this end of going to selling for? Hey, what uh, separable costs have we had after split off? Like make our calculations, allocate it all. And so we progressively got from physical method to sales value to NRV, more and more work. And sure, maybe the number is more precise or it gives more of an eventual fair share. But does it matter? Is the extra work worth the extra accuracy as far as value added to your user or is good enough good enough my vote for this one i do not want to sit around thinking for more than for less than one percent of total allocation when the total difference would be even a fraction of that so that's my vote i would be voting for this physical method method under this Okay, let's go back to your slides and finish this off with a question. Hey, floriculture company grows sunflowers. Sunflowers are harvested and two products are produced. Sunflower seeds for sale to gardeners to grow in their sunflowers and sunflower petals, which are sold to a health food company to grind up into dust and place into health supplement pills. From 1,000 kilograms of sunflowers, 
200 kilograms of seeds are produced and 300 kilograms of petals. 1,000 kilograms of sunflowers requires $2,000 in costs to produce. Sunflower seeds sells, sell for $9 per kilo, whereas petals sell for $14 per kilo. Using the sales value at split off point, the amount of joint costs allocated to petals would be, would it be A, 600, B, 2,000, C, 1,400, or D, 1,800. Please give this a try at home and see how you do. All right, so let's take a look at this and remind ourselves we are using the sales value at split off point and we are looking at seeds and we are looking at petals and we'll put in a total here and we're looking at sales value relative to each of them as our allocation basis. So we will get 200 kilograms of seeds that are produced and we could sell that for $9 per kilo. <laughs> and petals, what can we get? We can get 300 kilograms of petals and we could sell those for $14 per kilo. So this is a total of 6,000. And the joint costs that we are looking to allocate would be the $2,000 to produce um, the, the sunflowers up until that point that they're split off into their seeds and their petals. Okay, so um, we are asked how much joint cost is allocated to petals. So we can ignore seeds and go straight to petals and figure out their fair share which is going to be $1,400, which means that C is your correct answer. All right, how did you do? And remember, it's not you know bad if you got the answer wrong. Uh, that's actually good if you can go back and figure out why you got it wrong, and that'll be sticky. Uh, conversely, if you got it right, but it's because you kind of I don't know, maybe perhaps made a guess. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's good that you got it right if you were guessing. Uh, so if you're guessing and you got it right, um, go out, revert, uh, rewind back a little bit, try it again. Um, perhaps go through uh, video two and video three again, and then see if you can come up with it on your own with a little bit more uh, or a little bit less of a guess. Okay, one last video. You guys are doing great. We're almost there. Talk soon.